serious, in the spirit of October what's the creepiest or most paranormal experience that has happened to you? So me being me I decided it would be a good idea to play with a Ouija board at the ripe age of 5 years old. Little did I know that after that I would have extremely vivid dreams of family members dying. Five years after that I got a call that my uncle died and all those dreams came rushing back to my mind. I played with another Ouija board to try and talk to him, after that I started speaking to my dead family members and my friends dead family members. The creepiest part was when I visited my aunt in Cyprus and she read my tea leaves and looked at me dead in the eyes and said do not play with the board anymore. You're in danger. Apparently all the women on my dad's side speak to dead people. Side note, my best friend's dad died of cancer a few years before I met him and he does not speak about his dad. I talked to him about it and the look on his face when I perfectly described his dad and how his dad likes his coffee etc. His father even told me his mum's real name. I still talk to his father and my uncle to this day, it's actually fun speaking with them but I do not recommend playing both Ouija boards. Even if you don't believe in it. So I was walking down the hallway in my dark house to the bathroom when out of the corner of my eye, at the last second before I go into the bathroom, I see a figure. I only saw it for a split second cause when I did a double take to see it, it vanished. I remember what it looked like, though. It looked like the hide behind from Gravity Falls except with red, glowing eyes and its whole body was as black as night. It was watching me from behind a doorway down the hall from me. I did some research, but all I could scrounge up was that it was a red-eyed demon that feeds on negative energy, but I don't know. I was in basic training, had the 2am to 3am shift for fireguard, pretty much a two-man guard that records the activity overnight such as bathroom visits, moping, and then radio in every hour. I went to check the bathroom, went in, looked around, and then turned back to the entrance and saw someone walking across the doorway, no doors, the entrance led to the laundry room which then turns into the bathroom and showers. I walk out to the hallway and I see no one but the other guy on watch with me. I go to him and say hey did you record whoever it was that just walked by? He says, no one has been through the hallway since we started our shift. I am 100% sure I saw someone walk through. Scariest thing here is the lack of paragraphing. And hashtag X200B. One night I was getting up to go to the bathroom, and as I reached my bedroom door something jumped on my back and began to choke me. It wrapped what I can only describe as tentacles around my head and choked me until everything went black and I woke up back in my bed. Yes, I have sleep paralysis. But never once have I ever felt like I was upright during the episodes or anywhere else but my bed, I always was laying down. After this event my apartment which had always felt very safe for over 10 years, got very creepy. I started to hear things walking around at night, and walking slowly toward my bedroom door. One night the dryer alarm suddenly went off even though no one was using it and it continued to go off until I ran out of the laundry room to get someone, and then it suddenly stopped. Things continued this way until I finally moved. I still have sleep paralysis from time to time, but nothing even close to that level of weirdness. I have quite a few paranormal stories but this one stands out as the most vivid. I loved in Japan for a few years when I was a kid in a fairly new house but in a very historical area. We lived right up the hill from where the Japanese Imperial Army classes used to make their blood oaths and literally right on top of Emperor Hirohito's secret nuclear bunker. We had a lot of odd little things happen here or there. The most notable for my parents, I didn't experience this, was seeing light and shadows dancing in my sister's bedroom. The most notable for me was seeing and hearing a figure walk past my open door and into my brother's room that I assumed to be my brother until my dad walked up to me, white-faced, asking if I knew where my brother was. When I said in his room, my dad got even more freaked out and just said no he isn't. We checked and no one else was home. When I was about 10 or so, my cousin and I were walking around some of the acres of land our grandparents owned, being quite a whiles away from their home, 
We walked down by a patch of land that was pretty secluded from the rest of it. It was a sort of flowering field at the time surrounded almost completely by bushes. When we were about halfway through our walk we heard a voice. It sounded like our wannabe grandpa. He's not our grandpa but has been trying to get with our grandma for a few years. I don't remember exactly what it said though that was enough to freak us out. We ran all the way back to our grandparents home. A few days later he asked my grandma to marry him, she said no, he threatened to shoot my family down after that, it's not much but it's all I remember, and the worst I've got. So, when I was 7 my mom lived up a small hill in a trailer that was right in front of the woods, with my grandparents house at the bottom of the hill about 100 yards away. One night it started raining really badly and my grandmother got really nervous and started telling my grandfather that he needed to go get me and my mother out of the trailer. He, of course, kept saying she was overreacting and there was no way in hell he was going out in that rain. After about 30 minutes of my grandmother begging, their phone started ringing. He answered and it was my mom saying she needed him to come get me because the trailer was shaking. My grandpa went up the 100 yards to the trailer and knocked on the door. My mom answered and was surprised to see him. Grandpa, I'm here to get you. Mom, what do you mean? Grandpa, you called me to come get you so I'm here. Mom, my phone got turned off last week. Remember? Grandpa paused and sputtered then said grandma was freaking out and to just grab me and come to their house for the night. We were halfway down the hill when lightning struck the woods and a large tree came crashing down through the roof of my bedroom. It would have killed me. My grandpa insists to this day it was my mother's voice on the phone. Okay so this happened when I was like 13. I grew up with my grandma and we would go visit my aunt often. She was a Roman Catholic, like hardcore. She had pictures of Jesus, the Last Supper and the Virgin Mary like everywhere, in every room. She had three boys and two little girls. At the time they were like nine and eight. So we were playing in the backyard and we had all came inside to eat. Well they, the two little girls, went to their room to go play dolls or whatever. Well we're all in the dining room and their room is down the hall, maybe like six to eight feet from where we were eating. All of a sudden we hear the door slam and they're screaming their heads off. My aunt gets up and her sons, they're like 13, 11 and like 10, and they're trying their damnedest to open the door and they can't. The girls are still screaming and they're trying everything and they just can't get this door open. After like two of the longest minutes, it opens and the girls are in the middle of the room pale as can be. The room is a fucking mess and they're scared stiff. They don't move. They just keep crying and holding each other. We don't even realize the walls or anything. We pick them up and take them outside of the house and they calm down and we're like Ashley, what happened? Are you okay? She's like it had red eyes and it was jumping everywhere and trying to get us then Tori chimes in and she's like it kept laughing at us. After maybe 20 minutes outside, we go back in and go to their room. The faces of all the Jesus and Virgin Mary pictures were scratched off. There were scratches in the door. Scratches in the walls. And the little crosses my aunt had, were broken. I'm 34 now and I have never been back to my aunt's house. She still lives there and claims she hasn't experienced anything since. But they can't have a telephone anymore. No landline, no cell phones. They don't work. I have literal chills typing this PC it's been so long. I once sat in a corner of a bus on my way home from school when I was a young teenager and watched this girl talking to her friends. I predicted the majority all of her gestures and movements before she did them for at least 10 to 15 minutes straight. Left the bus thinking I had some sort of power. Have not been able to do it since. I've had many paranormal experiences. But my most recent is when I was bringing home groceries. I don't go shopping much but when I do I get lots of stuff. So I had to make several trips from the truck and to the door. So what happened is I left the door wide open and unlocked of course. So I go back to the truck to get another load and when I get back to the door it was shut and locked even the deadbolt was locked. The only other person in the house is my grandmother and she is resting in her room. 
So it was very strange and I could not get inside as I set the key down inside. Won't do that again. So I had to wake my nan from her rest and tell her I locked myself out by mistake. I did not tell her the weird thing because she is very religious and I did not want to freak her out. Creepiest was probably the demon that lived in my mirror when I was a kid, it stared at me with my own face and then twisted, and sent nightmares to me, sent ants to bite me in my sleep, and spiders and such. It did this until I put cardboard over the mirror so it couldn't see me anymore through that mirror. I still hate mirrors to this day. There's a bit more to it than that, but those were the worst things it did. The ants were fucking terrifying, they swarmed over me and bit me to all hell in the middle of the night. The spiders I woke up to before they got to me, and there were only about five of them, so they were easily killed off. The ants I ran from the room and they didn't follow, and were all gone the inks day. Additionally we had a cat that one time during a storm was trapped in my closet and burst the doors open and stuff, I found out years later we never actually owned a cat and never had, so I spent years seeing a cat around the house and it doing things but it was a spirit. Makes the door of the closet being thrown open a bit more frightening, even with having dealt with a demon thing in the mirror. That my parents kind of just didn't believe, sans the whole ant, spider thing, etc which they chalked up to other stuff. Used to stay in a boarding school for my engineering. Woke up early morning one day to knocking on my door dot as I went to open the door. I remember that I am the only resident in the building at that time and it's impossible for someone to enter the building since it does not open until couple of hours. So like any sane normal guy, I hid under the bed until the it stopped. What made this truly creepy was that for the entire duration, no one called me out to open the door and the knocks did not have a pause. To this day I don't know what had happened. I still believe it to be a joke because nothing else makes sense. A while back I used to volunteer at a cancer hospital, for some reason they were cool with me being there at night. During the night shift, a single unit was open and the rest of the hospital was desolated, with the exception of some key personnel. One night at around 11 p.m., I was asked to run to get the respiratory technician, his office was on the other side of the hospital. I thought it'd be cool, I hadn't really explored the hospital at night. I'd always stay in the nurse's station answering lights, it was a good excuse to walk around. The hallways were empty, but it felt sad, as if people mourning on the hallway. Completely opposite to the busy feeling that you'd get if you were walking around them in the mornings. Things were fine until I turned into a very long corridor, I felt as if the lights had started flickering and all of the sudden I felt as if someone was staring down at me from the very end of the hallway. Thankfully I didn't have to go all the way, I had to make a right halfway through. I remember the dread I felt knowing I had to keep walking in order to get to the tech. As I kept walking towards it, the flickering of the lights was more intense and when I finally turned I saw a shadowy figure form at the end of the hallway. I ran to the respiratory tech's office and did not return to my unit until the tech was ready to go. Later that night a patient passed away. I still wonder if it had anything to do with what was going on. Mm -hmm.